Socialists boldly transforming colleges throughout the West with many higher institutions replacing knowledge with ideology and propaganda. Our next guest has written a book about this phenomenon, which you've talked about so often, here on Outsiders Wackademia, to try and save the most intellectually vulnerable persons on the college campuses, our undergraduates. He's the author of Brutal Minds, The Dark World of Left-Wing Brainwashing in Our Universities. Stanley Ridgely joins us now. Stanley, give us a few, great to see you, give us a few examples from your book, from Brainwash, from the brainwashing on the college campuses. How is it practiced, Stanley? Well, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here speaking with you about this, uh, one of the most pressing problems that faces America today, the decline of higher education, and who's responsible. And I'll give you some examples. In fact, I can tell you guys how you too can become brainwashers on the college campus, because they publish manuals on how to go about doing it. Uh, one of the key factors or one of the key things they do to um, uh, in, engage the brainwash is to engage, as, attack the most vulnerable students on our campuses who are freshmen. And they do this in the first several weeks of, of college by essentially using the same tactics that American cults use to make students feel very loved, very accepted, inclusion and belonging, to put them off, off their guard and have them suspend their critical faculties uh, so that they brainwash can begin. It's a three-stage process of unfreezing a current belief system, changing that belief system, and then refreezing that belief system to, uh, and then engaging them in activities that will intend, intended to keep them from backsliding into their old ways, ways that they've learned at home, the traditional um, uh, moral upbringing they may have uh, had in, um, in, in, the, in their home life. And so this is that's basically the, the system of brainwashing. And you can find this uh, for yourself in uh, Teaching for Diversity and Social Justice um, in Chapter 4. And I, I tell you that there's only two main entities in the United States where brainwashing is utilized. Uh, over here, we have American cults, such as the Unification Church, commonly called Moonies. And over here, we have American higher education. And anyone who is engaged in social justice education or transformative education is engaged in the brainwash. I mean, that's a fact. And in Brutal Minds, I tell you who is doing it. I tell you name names, how they're doing it, where they're doing it, who they're doing it to, and what we can do to stop it. Great example, question, Rita. Yeah, Rita. Sure. Well, does this stop at college campuses? Once these kids enter the real world, uh, does the uh, indoctrination stop? Or are they taking this brainwashed brush brainwashing and then infecting the uh, the corporate world the real world with it well i think we can see uh, evidence of this in the corporate world with regard to especially dei or diversity equity and inclusion which itself sounds like a cult mantra when you get down to it yes. yeah. <laughs> You know, Moonies use the terms um, uh, peace and unity and try to attract young people with that. Um, the modern cults on campuses use inclusion and belonging. And this is, it does sound like a, a cult mantra, doesn't it? And corporate, uh, corporate America is using some of the same techniques. They're bringing in nonprofits, some of the very same nonprofits that are brought onto the college campuses to run workshops, uh, brave spaces, difficult dialogues, courageous conversations, learning about race. These are all euphemisms for the kind of brainwashing program that we see extended from the college campus into the um, into the uh, corporate world. So, but what's the source of all this? I was, I was going to say the source of all this is University of North, I would say uh, university education schools or schools of education, please. So I was going to say, Dr. Ridgely, how is it then, you know, we know here in Australia how far the rot has set in. We know how far the rot has set in in the United States and across the Western world, certainly the English-speaking world. How do we begin a mass deprogramming of all of these people to then get them out of the cult and seeing reality clearly again? Well, deprogramming is the perfect word to use because you're, anytime you have someone whose belief system has been changed by virtue of a brainwash program, uh, they tend to speak in jargon. They tend to speak in unoriginal phrases. You can really pick them out. Uh, it's not hard. Um, 
And so your question, I think, is how can, I'm going to rephrase that question, is how can parents and students defend themselves against the brainwash to begin with? And one of the key things to do is to recognize when you're in a brainwash situation, when you're in a threat situation, as I say in the book, uh, how to recognize that, what are the tells, the ideological language, the terminology. If you indeed have someone in front of you who is, who is soliciting your trust, and they do this very explicitly, they're getting you to model, you know, they're modeling vulnerability. They want you to experience express vulnerability, make yourself vulnerable, disclose. It's very similar to the uh, the types of brainwash situations you find in K through 12, uh, with people saying, we have a safe space where you don't have to tell your parents what we're doing in here. In college, it's very this, similar in, in the sense that uh, we want you to ex you know, expo expose yourself to criticism. And in this way, they destabilize the identity, they destabilize the sense of self in preparation for changing that belief system. Um, how can we go about uh, deprogramming these folks? Well, first of all, sunlight is the best disinfected, as Louis, Louis Brandeis said, uh, and transparent, demands for transparency. Believe me, on the college campus, you will be hard pressed to get anyone to acknowledge what is going on. Uh, even I've had trouble of soliciting and finding out the material that is being taught to some of our students. Now, it's been passed to me uh, through the side door. I know uh, most of what is going on with respect to the people who are doing this brainwash on the campuses. I know who is doing it. I name names in, in my book. And it, it's kind of, it's a scourge. And so one of the biggest and best ways we can battle this is to reveal the, the information that's being passed to our students and also reveal the information that is being withheld. In other words, a lot of the stuff is based in neo-Marxism. It was debunked long ago, um, but students are not taught this. They're not given the arguments uh, against the, um, the uh, critical consciousness that they're being uh, uh, initiated into. And uh, so a massive deprogramming uh, program, I don't know if, if that's possible, but what I can say that Parents and students can stop this uh, the scandal right now in its tracks by engaging some of the activities that I described in the book. Absolutely. Uh, Stanley Ridgely, great to chat to you. Um, you're absolutely right. Parents and teachers, sunshine is the best. Uh, parents and students, sunshine is the best disinfectant. Urge people to buy your book, Brutal Minds, because it is important that kids, under, kids have a method of defending themselves and parents and grandparents have a method of understanding this neo-Marxist left-wing ideology that is literally brainwashing our kids. Uh, thanks for doing the hard work for us so that we know how to take the first steps to putting some end to this lefty lunacy. Stanley Ridgely, thanks so much for talking to us here on Outsiders.